All right, next what we're going to talk about is subsets of real numbers. Uh, one thing you do need to realize is the symbol they use to represent real numbers. So real numbers is kind of crazy. It's kind of like a paragraph symbol. Uh, it's an R with basically two sticks, so kind of like a backwards paragraph symbol. So uh, anytime you see that, they're talking about real numbers. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is the first subset of real numbers. And a subset is basically a set within a set. So when we're talking about our real number set, what we're going to do is we'll illustrate this by a Venn diagram. So here is our set of real numbers. So, of course, this is our real number set right here. And when we're talking about this, the smallest set of real numbers that we're going to study is this thing called the natural numbers. And we'll use n to represent your natural numbers. So we'll come over to the next slide and talk about them. So the natural numbers, the natural numbers are also called counting numbers. And the reason they're called counting numbers is because of how we count. So our uh, natural numbers are going to be the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you know, when you're playing hide and go seek with a kid and you say count to 10, you don't start at negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. So those are your counting numbers. So anything that falls in that category will be a natural number. The next step we're going to do are basically our whole numbers. Well, whole numbers are just a little bit bigger than our natural numbers and we use a W to represent whole numbers. Uh, the way that I remember what whole numbers are is I think about this word whole right here and I, I take off the W and think well whole H-O-L-E that actually represents a, like a hole in the ground and a hole in the ground kinda looks like the number zero so the difference between the counting numbers and the whole numbers is basically the uh, set of whole numbers includes zero. So there are actually infinitely many, infinitely many natural numbers, and there are infinitely many whole numbers. But if you take away all the natural numbers from the whole numbers, you only have one number left, and that one number, of course, is zero. Uh, from there, what we can do is move on to the next subset, which is our integers. Now you would think, oh, hey, well, n is natural numbers, w is whole numbers, integers is i, but that's not the case. We actually use z to represent your integers. So I'll highlight those. So here, whoops, might not want to highlight in that color. So n is going to be our thing here, here. Uh, and the next one we use z actually to represent our integers. And integers, uh, there are different ways you can say it. It's the positive and negative numbers that you're dealing with. Uh, so our set would look a little something like this. And again, there are infinitely many numbers in this uh, subset. And uh, if you even take away all of the whole numbers from the integers, you're still left with an infinite number of numbers. So kind of hard to grasp sometimes, but if you think about it, you may figure it out. And then our next one that we have uh, is our rational numbers. So we'll come over here and we'll say these are our rational numbers. Uh, what we use for our rational numbers, just like your integers, is a little crazy. We'll actually use Q. So Q is our abbreviation for rational numbers. So a rational number is basically any number that can be expressed as A over B. So uh, as our sets get larger and larger and larger, what we actually have is all of the natural numbers are whole numbers. All whole numbers are integers. All integers are rational numbers. Uh, but it doesn't go the other way. So there are some rational numbers that are not integers. Even though negative 3 can be expressed as a fraction, A over B, negative 3 over 1, 3 over negative 1, 6 over negative 2. So you can see a bunch of different options. Uh, what you do need to know about rational numbers is there are some in this set that will not fall into that category. So in your Venn diagram, it's the numbers that would fall, you know, in this spot as opposed to somewhere in one of those circles. So uh, you have numbers like 1 half, 
uh, three halves, seven thirds. Those are all examples of rational numbers. But then you also have certain things like decimals that end. So decimal two five, that's actually a rational number because it's the fraction one fourth. Any decimal that ends or repeats can be represented as a rational number. So any decimal that ends or repeats can be ras uh, written as a rational number. So kind of keep that in mind. All right, so like I said, sorry, we had a little interruption there. Uh, some number that can actually um, be uh, written as a fraction. So decimals that do not end or do not repeat will not fall in this category. So rational numbers. Uh, B cannot be equal to zero. The reason that we put that in there is because if B is equal to zero, then that's undefined. It's not a rational number, so kind of keep that in mind. The last one we have to talk about are irrational numbers. And irrational numbers, as you can see, it's going to be independent of our rational numbers because obviously you can't be rational and irrational. The prefix irrational basically means uh, not rational. And we use that a little bit when we're trying to actually formally write our definition. So irrational is our letter I. And what we'll do is we'll say uh, any number that cannot be written as A over B. All right, so we'll put a couple examples up here because these are kind of examples that uh, people run into a lot. Um, it's not too hard to figure out whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, but sometimes your irrational numbers get a little bit uh, complicated. The most common irrational number, if I had to guess right now, uh, you guys would say is pi. So pi is a number that does not repeat in terms of its decimal, and it does not end. So therefore, it represents an irrational number. Uh, the one we're going to study is called the natural base, which is called E. And we'll get into that later as we move along through this uh, textbook. And then uh, the other common ones are basically uh, perfect squares that are not perfect squares, or square roots that are not perfect squares. So you see square root of 3, square root of 2, square root of 5. Square root of 4 is not on there because obviously it's a perfect square. So this is your Venn diagram to represent the set of real numbers and how the subsets are related to each other.